and I to be closer to Jesus. Amen. 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 They say, Jesus. 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 Draw me close. Draw me close. Here we go. Some of us Christians are like that. We need a new battery every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bet on that. We need to charge.
that one. For being so good to us. Yes. Amen. You're such a good and a faithful God, Lord. We just applaud you. We exalt you. We lift you high. Bless your people this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, worship team. Great job at you. Well, we got a lot of things going on today. Things are going to be a little bit different. So we just like to welcome all of you that are here. Great crowd this morning. That's wonderful. And we'll just let that line. That's okay. No, Ralph's going to get it anyway. <laughs> welcome all of you that are here and all of you that are out there that are watching us. And we want to talk to you, first of all, about just uh, how much you are loved and cared for and gifted. Yes, amen. And so proud of you that you're using your gifts. So we're going to use an old parable today as we get a little further into the service that talks about, not always in a positive sense, pounds and gifts given, but I want to put the emphasis on the ones that did good this morning because you're doing good. Amen. amen. Let's give yourselves a hand. Yeah. And so pray the Lord, and I'd like to thank... Uh, Brother Michael Paul yeah. for standing in the mic. Yeah. And Brother Ralph also. Yeah. And on Wednesday night for Ralph also. Amen. So. Yeah. 
and just a lot of moving parts. They don't stop just because they're taking out of water out of me somewhere. So, <laughs> so things keep on moving, and we got a lot of moving parts. A lot of very gifted people using their gifts well, and I think sometimes they just need to be told. So, and I want to thank you very much for the Sunday school teachers to the whatever door openers or whoever's doing what we got people doing all sorts of things all the time and i know a lot of you are loving and supporting and we just appreciate it all both of you that are here and though you are that up there so we're going to talk about that a little more but right now we want to know if you're welcome want to keep supporting us it's the P.O. Box 788, Lucerne Valley, California. Amen? Amen. Nine, two, three. Five, six. All right. So we got that part right. And Brother Ralph has a couple words of wisdom. Just like old times this morning. Welcome back, Pastor. I talk to him like four times a week, and uh, I tell him about the Lord. He's, I know, I know. That's all he tells me. I know, I know. I said, if you knew, you would, you would go to church because you'd be right. scared to go to hell. Amen. And uh, I tell him all the time, but he doesn't want to listen. He denies God. I have a brother that says that's just a big thing to control people, and uh, you know, he. So many people have different ideas. They deny God. I'd be afraid to hear that and deny my Lord because there is a God anybody you see there's not a God has got to be really dumb yeah really dumb and, and you know the whole thing is that what if we would do what God tells us to do how would this world be if we get everything that God told us to do there wouldn't be no wars there'd be people loving each other there wouldn't be no famines all over because we'd be helping each other Amen. And it probably be a lot of these sicknesses won't be around anymore. Yeah, right. And uh, th that's why we're in, we got a big problem. Look at the, just a few people here. But well, Lucerne Valley is big. There's a lot of people. The church should be full of people dying to hear God's word that's to right. come to church. You know, I just, it, it breaks my heart to see that people are camping out there and Yes. Walking around and, 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 and being all night on Wednesdays, I passed by by the old senior citizen place. That place was packed. Right. But they won't come to church. Right. But they're playing bingo. That's how they play with their lives, playing bingo. You yeah. might win or you're going to lose. Yeah. You know, so I just don't get it. <laughs> God, just forgive them yes. and help them if yes. they need help. That's right. And uh, just say a prayer and. And oh, one more thing. Thank God for our pastor. He's yes. back. Yeah. Yeah. And another, another thing. I hope he stays back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's say a prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for everything yes. you do, Lord. Because you're in control, my God. Nobody else is in control. You are, Lord. You gave us that book to tell us to quit it. Turn around. Turn around. But most of us will say, I ain't going to turn around. I'm going to do it my way. 
Yeah, you're going to do it your way. And you're going to be sorry one day because you did it your way. we got to do it God's way. And God's way is the good way. I don't see why you don't worship the Lord. All he does for us is just want to make us better. That's all he wants to do. Take our problems away from us. We have problems, but we have somebody we can give them to. And I just thank you, Lord, and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And now we have a special from the group. Amen. amen. of the whole sermon this morning. Our church has been blessed over the years Amen. to have people that are very gifted and very willing to use their gifts. That's why we stay afloat, even though we're small and independent in a small town, and yet you are a tremendous curiosity to a lot of people. Amen. <laughs> because we exist. That's right. And not only just exist, but we are blessed. Amen. And we were blessed a lot of times because of just you and your willingness to use the gifts that God's given you. Amen. One of our very special members, been with us for over 30 years now, is getting ready to move or graduate on. And uh, 
I'm going to call her up and talk about her a little bit, and she'll. She's shy, and she's uh, and she's lame, and she can talk. Now, even before some of you were born, <laughs> this lady and even her first husband helped us build the big room in the back. A long, long time ago. Uh, Ray Clark and uh, those guys, they all put it together, him and Art, and her husband came down, they said, was supposed to come down with a big tractor and help us hang all the stringers. They didn't show up. But who did show up? Her husband. They came down and all the stringers for us from way back then. I couldn't tell you the many, many, many times she has blessed people quietly. She's one of those quiet givers right. that does things. A lot of times you may see her up here on the platform once in a while, but she's also paid the electric bill for the shelter down there for years yeah. while we used it down there to keep our meat in our food program. She's in moot multiple things. Oftentimes, I even find a cake. <laughs> <laughs> or a pie on my desk. Or maybe even a tie. Aww. Yeah. And she's probably the guilty culprit in all those things. So we just wanted to really congratulate her. And this is just a, she's such a tremendous great gift to the church and has been not all gifts are obvious, not all gifts are out in the front and pushing all the time. And we welcome, we, we thank God for all the gifts because it takes many parts to make up a body, amen? Amen. amen. But she's one of those that sit behind the scenes sometimes and never gets uh, recognized and never gets known for what she's done. And she's just done a lot of it. We love her and appreciate her. All that she has done over the last over 30 years. Yes, everything. Uh, some of the things you might have done is uh, uh, way back when we used to travel every Sunday. When we were all younger, we did like Cal, Char, Doc, Elaine, as we would travel from church. Once we're done here, we would oftentimes go to a convalescent home and do a service. Yeah, and then go to Barstow and do an evening service. Yeah. yeah. So you know, young pups try to keep up. Or something. And then not only tear down the equipment, go set up the equipment for each and every event. And we did that day for day for years. And she was always part of it there. So Atlanta, yeah. That was some interesting services over there, huh? We would actually be preaching to the congregation and they'd be holding people up outside the front door. It's a literal story. Uh, that took place while we were there. Kids actually came to church. You imagine this, when we started holding services there before they had church over there, they would actually uh, roll up their pant legs or whatever and come to church no matter what the storm was. Some of them even got beat up on their way to church and knew it was going to happen. They would come in bloody and we'd get them home. Amazing. We ran as many of theirs as we are right now on a Sunday night. People who have never been in church before in their lives. Amazing. You have a mission field around you, right? Ralph was talking about this. You have no idea. There's a mission field out there and people to reach and things to do. Well, this is a very special gift to us and we're just going to uh, bless her today and honor her for her giving to us. And I have now some, another partner over here. And we'd like to give you these. We'd like to give you this. I'll hold that while you open this. We'll work together. Right. <laughs> I can read that part. But it's got all kinds of signatures all over it. 
but it's also got a check in it for $500. You don't have to read it as long as the bank does. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this tremendous gift you have given us, as you have given us so many others. She has set quite a bar, she has set quite an example on how to serve the Lord. Quietly, dependably, faithful, using whatever she can for the glory of the Lord. And we just ask, Lord, you continue to bless her and use her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's one of the good things. And by the way, we want you all to stay after church. Because it's not going to stop here. We're going to go on right into the next room and celebrate back there also. Okay? So don't get in a hurry. We're not leaving yet. So I want you to look at some verses. And we're going to take a long time this morning. But I want you to understand this. That every member of the body of Christ. Whether you accept it or not. Yes children you may escape <laughs> Get out, leave, leave me, that's okay. Leave no man behind. I want to make a couple of startling statements. Everybody is gifted. Whether you use your gift or not is your choice. How you use it is your choice. Whether you're present here or at home, you need to understand you have been gifted and you're not just gifted, you're gifted by God. Some people have denied that for so long that they have no idea, can't believe it, can't conceive of it, but whatever it is you have in your hand, you are gifted. And we're going to look at that thought this morning. You are well gifted. And a lot of you use your gifts well. And that's why I want to put the emphasis this morning is on the positive sign. Are there some dead beats? Yeah. And you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to give you any press this morning. Because we talk about you bad guys all the time. I want to honor the good guys. And maybe some of you others will catch on that are still hiding in holes. Use what God's given you. And it's a serious call because God's given it to you and he didn't give it to you without a reason. He gave you whatever gift you possess. He gave it to you for a reason. To be used. Not just to be used for you, for your good, but to be used for his glory. That's right. Amen. And when you refuse to use your gift, you are denying God's gift to you. Yep. And you will bear a price for that. Yes, you will. So you need to know, first of all, that you're gifted. We're all gifted. We're all gifted. And it is required of the steward to be found faithful. The steward is one who has been left with the care, custody, and control that the gift that God has given him. Whether it be support, whether it be prayer, whether it be study, whether it be teaching, whatever the gift may be, it doesn't matter. And some may think it would so minute, so tiny, so small, so insignificant that it doesn't matter. It does matter. Every right. gift matters. Amen. 
every corpuscle, every nerve in the body of Christ, it matters. That's right. It matters to the rest of the body. Yes, it matters for the glory of God. Amen. So we're going to look at a couple of verses first of all. And again, I just want to say thank you for all those of you that have been helping, all those that use your gifts and use them well and are working on using them even better. Thank you for all of that. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. In speaking of spiritual gifts, he starts off that chapter by saying, Brother, I would not have you ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. He doesn't want you stupid about your gift. And he doesn't want you acting stupid with it or about it. He wants you to be aware of it. Why is it so important that you be aware of your gift? Because the other parts, the other members of the body depend on your gift. I spent some time in the hospital this last week. And again, it was illustrated to me that there are certain parts of my body that need other parts of my body to function. <laughs> and if they don't, it can mess things up. Why do you think the body of Christ is any different? You think you can go hide in a hole and not affect the rest of the body? Sure get some quiet in church sometimes. Well, I said I wasn't going to deal with you guys, so I'm not going to. I'll move on. <laughs> First Corinthians 12, 13 says this. Just underline the thought that we're all one body and one gift. But one and the same self spirit works all things, distributing to each individual as he wills. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't do, don't use their gifts or don't do what God's given them because they don't understand it or they don't like what God's given them to do. They don't like their assignment. Can you imagine your hands or your feet if they acted that way? I'm sorry, Tommy. My left foot just doesn't want to work today. As you get older, you may have some parts that feel like that. They just don't want to work today. Yeah, oh yeah. But how silly for us when we think about the body of Christ and we think about how we behave. The same, the Spirit Himself, the Holy Spirit, did what? He gifted everybody severally as who wills? As He wills. He gifted you. He gifted you with what you got, Mike. To the amount of what you got, received it. He's given it to you. God's given it to you. Oh, look at the Amplified. Same verse. And these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by the one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. God's given you what he wants you to have, what he wants you to start with, and start using it. And many of you are, and thank God for that. Amen. And some of you are working on it to even do better and better <laughs> things with the gifts that you have. How many know that you ought to take your gift and work on it? Amen. Amen. Expand it. Yeah. Wow. Romans 12, 3. Now I'm not talking about spiritual gifts, but we're all our practical gifts. <laughs> Or psychological gifts, physical gifts. Romans 12, 3. Of course, a great chapter in the Word. But as he exalts us about being not conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then he jumps in in verse 3 and says this. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than they ought to think. In other words, get over yourself. You're not the one in charge. That's right. God is. Right, amen. Well, I just don't like what's happening down there. Well, too bad, Titty. Get in line. 
you're supposed to humble yourself to who? To God. But to think of him so full, soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has given you your faith. That's another word in this context for gift. God has gifted you. He's the one that's responsible. You're not in charge. He is. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, but we be many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace, that's God's grace and faith again, that has been given to us, let us use them. I said, let us use let us use them. What's them? Yes. Your gifts. Everybody say, God, God. Help, me help me to discover, to discover renew, renew, and use, and use my, gifts my gifts like never before, like never before. For, your glory. for your glory. Yeah. And of course, the context is within the body of Christ. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us each use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And it goes on, or ministry, let us use our ministry. He who is teaching and teaching, and it goes on and lists one after one after one after one after one. All the things that God has blessed. But it all starts way back up in verse 1, where it says, Therefore, I humbly, he begs you to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That's the attitude. That's the attitude. But you need to know each and every person that's looking at me this morning, whether you're at home, on TV, or you're here this morning, each and every one of you are gifted and you're responsible for what God has given you. For the glory of God to use both individually and corporately in the body of Christ for his glory. That's our responsibility. There's a lot more to it than just coming to church to listen to the preacher once in a while. You need to be using what you've got for God's glory. The church is a functioning body an organism looking to glorify God with different projects and different things. And it's made up of many parts. And those parts have to be active for it to be healthy and get the job done. Well, praise the Lord. That was my introduction. Sorry. Ephesians 4 says this. Ephesians 4.11 Bringing himself these are the five called five manifold gifts that he gives the church in another tremendous chapter. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and some teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints. It's not just an individual ride but it is a corporate ride. We are a called the body of Christ. That means that we put together. And God doesn't put his body together unorganized. That's right. Or hair and scare them. That's right. Amen. And we got a lot of people flittering and fluttering all over the country from here to there wondering what's going on and how am I going to be used to God? Get your head on and get in service and be dependable somewhere. Amen. 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 Be faithful. That's right. Amen. Be dependable. Yes. God doesn't have some weird concept. He has an organized, functioning body that should function for his glory. Amen. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some prophets, some teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That gives you the whole purpose. Till we all come, how long? Till we all come to the unity of the faith? and of the knowledge and of the Son of God to a perfect man, 
to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, don't act like a bunch of snot and those kids running here and there and all over the place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Band together and be faithful and dependable. Yes. Amen. No longer children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and in the cunning craftiness whereby deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. <coughs> Listen to this line. May grow up in all things into him who is the head. We are the branches. He is the vine, right? Yes. Yeah. Amen. We are the feet in his hands. And we're growing what? Into him. We're growing into him. Everybody say, Jesus. 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 You are, you you are, are the, head. the head. And we are, we are growing, growing into you. Into you. you. Being changed moment by moment, precept upon precept, concept upon concept, step by step, into the very likeness of Christ yes. for his glory. Into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body. Are you part of a body of Christ? Oh, yeah. Amen. Then you are part of the body, joined and knit together. Why the word knit? <laughs> because when you knit something it's all intertwined right and yep. twisted. so it's much more intimate and it's also much more strong strong mm -hmm. and it even has a tendency it can stretch it can do things that a brittle rope can't do it can carry a load that a brittle rope can't carry. It can flex. But it stays together. And if it's knit together, it's what? Each strand is dependent on what? Each other. On the other strand. Yeah. So you're important. You need to know you're important. So many of you are doing so good, and I just want to be like a cheerleader this morning, blowing a, a bugle or pounding a drum and saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Tremendous job. But we've got other things to do. And you, some of you have been hiding in rabbit holes. And you need to get out. You need to get busy about your father's business. Some of you need to shake off your gifts and say, here am I, Lord. Use me, forgive me, and use me. <coughs> but speaking the truth in love may grow up into all things, a head from whom the whole body joined together, knit, the, knit together by whatever joint supplies. Listen to the verbiage in this verse. So incidental. So inconsequential, you might think. It says, to whatever point supplies, to every joint, according to the effectual working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. See, you're all gifted. You're all gifted. And you have a purpose. Now for the main text. <laughs> I won't scare you to death this morning. I realize the time. But you know the story. It's told in Matthew and it's told in Luke. But we're going to look just briefly at a couple of things in the one in Luke. And it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered them his goods to them. 
And listen carefully. I want you to listen to this. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Each, to each, according to what? His own abilities. And immediately he went away. Sounds just like over there in 1 Corinthians, doesn't it? Holy Spirit gave things the way he wanted to give them. Romans 12, the same way. God did it the way he wanted to do it. So this man gave these servants these talents before he left. Then he who had five received, listen what he did, then he had five that received talents, received five talents, went and traded with them and made another five talents. And he likewise who had received the two gained two more. But he who had received the one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. And the Lord said to him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he also who had received the two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. And he said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many into the joy of the Lord. You notice, one was given more than twice the other. One gained more than twice the other. But God, this Lord, showed no partiality to them and whatsoever. He honored them both exactly the same. Yes. Amen. Why? They both obeyed. They both obeyed. They were faithful. They were dependable. They used what their Lord had given them for his glory. One is a lot greater than the other. Didn't seem to matter to the Lord. What was mattering to him was what? Being faithful. Their faithfulness. Their dependability. And their faithfulness. But then the one. There's always one. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord... I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you had not sown, and gathering where you had not scattered seed. And I was afraid. What a crock of bull. <laughs> <laughs> if he had been really afraid, he'd have done something. Yeah. yeah. Yep. He wasn't afraid. He was just looking for an excuse. <clears throat> He was just lazy. Yeah. The Lord sees right through him. I was afraid. <laughs> it's all your fault, God. You're so awesome. You scared me to death. Get over yourself. <laughs> and he went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. But the Lord said, answered him and said, you are a wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reaped where I had not sown and gathered where I had not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. 
So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten. Wow. For everyone who has, more will be given. But he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has have, will be taken away. In other words, friend, we're here to honor those that are using it. And God bless you again and again. Yes, but for those of you that are hiding it, you need to understand the law of God. Use it or lose it. Yes. Use it or lose it. And if you really love the Lord, if you really fear the Lord, you won't hide it. You will get serious about using it. Amen. Because he is an awesome God. That's right. Amen. He is an awesome God. And he loves you. Amen. And he wants nothing more for you than the very best. But hiding his gifts not as what's good for you, and it's not what's good for him. And it's not good for what his body is. Cal, come to your guitar, if you would. It's amazing to me the people that are reached sometimes even from the soul of church. That just blows my mind. While in the hospital this time and put into a room, well I don't think he'd mind if I tell him, a bit of a rebel. Just my kind of guy. And we just had a great time. They had no idea that I was a pastor at first, till we got to know one another. It was just a two of us. He'd been paralyzed with a stroke. 99% are legally blind. And as I was talking to different people about different things, he overheard the fact that I was a pastor. And he said, you know, I used to go to a church. I'm from San Diego. He said, I used to go to the high desert to see my mom once when I went to a little church by a fire station out in the sun dog. Is that a mind blower? Wow. Yes. Yeah. And he said, man, I come every chance I get because that church, that church, mm -hmm. you had a worship. Wow. Amen. Amen. He said, I go back to San Diego and I tell my friends, and this is not a necessarily a saintly <laughs> vocabulary type of a person. He said, I'd tell him if I was going to church anywhere. He said, I'm going to go back to that little church. Amen. Yeah. They serve God, and you can tell it. They love the Lord, and you can tell it. And they said, I used to just like to come and stand in the back. And I remember him with a kind of a funky hat, and he was kind of blind. And he wore with his, carried his white cane. <clears throat> and he would listen to the music. He said, I love the music. He said, I love the music. They worship the Lord. So you don't know. You have no idea how God can use your gifts. If you simply yield your gifts, each and every one, use your gift for the glory of God. And people from Lord knows where are blessed. So I'm thrilled and excited for you and want to say thank you again. You're well gifted. And many of you are doing well with your gifts. I want to encourage you to expand them. Use them, practice them. Use them even better. And for those of you that may have a tendency, for whatever reason, to have hidden it through a crisis or a problem or whatever, 
Pray about it. Ask God to forgive you. Because he will, just like he has me and every other person in here. And use your gift for the glory of God. If not here, somewhere else. But use it for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless. We want you also it says, uh, oh, I just told you about him. <laughs> he came back because he loved the music. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Stand with me. That's it. Broken down for fellowship and share we just ask again our blessing upon elaine our beloved sister in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you